Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. My name's Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and Heno. Hey, guys. How you doing? Last week. So it's... far. Yeah, and I think it's because I've just been kind of miserable at work. <laughs> All right. Well, that's fine. So, so it's gone by real quick. <laughs> that's interesting. Usually when yeah, I was I miserable, think... the week would go by slower. So Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I think it's because I'm, I'm, it's not miserable. It's I'm annoyed. And so therefore I'm applying myself. Oh, okay. So you're redirecting your energy. Yes, exactly. All right. Yeah. We had a, we had a, a, a thing happen this week where some, you know, when the, the, the vocal minority gets their way, and it just upends everything. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because it comes on the heels of them specifically talking about how they're never going to let the vocal minority create policy. Right. And here we go. And they're literally doing it again. And I just – and the the best part about it is I didn't fight it like at all. I just – I like, oh, do you want to read what they say? And it's like, no, I already know what they have to say. Like. <laughs> You don't, you know, that you're not asking me for my thoughts on it. So I have, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if I were to be given an opportunity to present another side, then perhaps maybe I would read what they have to say, but you've, you've just listened to the vocal minority and decided to make a decision, a policy decision based on that. And it's just like, all right, well, that that's, and it was great because I was first really, 
it it was only like an afternoon of of kind of bitterness and the best part was monday i had my my uh service meeting opportunity thing and i knew that i was going to feel better as a result of that cuz any time that i get out of myself and and be of service to others i will stop thinking about whatever it is right. and on the way already on the way down i just it kind of hit me that well you, you don't need to do anything it's done it's over just move on to the next thing what's the next indicated thing and that was affirmed in in our you know hour or so that we hung out and and you know did sobriety stuff and by the end of that i was exactly at that place now that didn't mean it was just going to go away because every time i got to work i was reminded of it again right but then i just focused on work i was like okay i have projects to do this week i have things my boss is on vacation so when he comes back i want to say i got this done this done this done this done yeah. and well not to mention so like that. you think about it, it's like no matter what your job is there's always going to be some policies you don't agree with don't like yep. think you're stupid fill in the you know yep. whatever so yep. it's like like you if you can just carpet yeah compartmentalize it into one of those kind of sessions and just be like it is what it is. I, I can't, like you said, mm -hmm. you why waste the energy fighting it if you know it's not going to change at that point. It's yeah. like pick your pick your fight, you know. Yeah, and if somebody just you know, because it, it was it's the usual. Well, if I do get a chance to explain myself, what am I going to say? And then I just realized nothing. There's nothing to say. I'm literally going to say, "Well, that's done." Yeah. <laughs> and right. and and that's it. Yeah. That that's it's done. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yep. Moving on. It's yeah. so it's so funny because it feels so defeatist, but it does. But you're but not actually. Truth. Yeah, you're you're just like, look, I I'm just being realistic that I can't make a change here, so I'm gonna put my energy into better things. Yeah, that's exactly it. And the other part that was good is I wasn't asked to adapt to hmm. the new policy. Hmm. I was pretty much told I didn't have to deal with it anymore, and I was just like. Even better. Okay. You know, like if someone says if someone says anything, I just it's it's like it's done and and I don't have to do this anymore. Yay. <laughs> like, it's just weird. It's when something has been my responsibility and I I take it very seriously. I try not to slack on it. I'm regular with what I need to do. I'm taking care of the property. I have an eye for the property. And all of a sudden, I'm pretty much told that I don't have to deal with it anymore. And it's just, it's going to take a little time to, to just get used to that. Mm -hmm. it, it'll get taken care of now just by somebody else and in a different way. And it's not better or worse. It's just different. Yeah. If someone decides it's better or worse, that's up to them. It's not up to me. And it just made it easier to just get into that level of acceptance and get back to work. But it did affect me for a couple of days. My mood was definitely, I was just kind of sour. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, and I tried not to, I, I, I was conscious of that, that I was feeling a little bit sour. And like I said, I just tried to get into my work. So it, so I was working and if somebody engaged me, I engaged them just like I would any, any other time. There was no, you know, I didn't let it change how I interacted with anybody. It was just internally, I was a little, a little cloudy, basically. <laughs> so, but it made the week go by super fast because tomorrow's my Friday, and it's like, woohoo, done. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, at least yeah. it went fast for you. Yeah, it yeah. did. And then I got uh, my first rehearsal is going to be tomorrow night. After, jeez, I don't think we've rehearsed in a month, and I've got a brand new song that's a hundred percent done i have not been able to write a song and just have it finish itself i it's been a it's been a while it's been a while i have a lot i get a lot of ideas and partial things and it was funny because the one thing that i i'm not really strong at is writing lyrics and I just decided to write nonsense, and it just came flowing out of me. I'm like, okay, well, that's the key then for me is to just write gibberish. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, it's worked for a lot of bands. What did you say, Jen? Do you, do you write the the next umbap 
<laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> All right, just making it's sure. A, it's a little story. too weird. Like, it's it's like Brian said. There's a lot of bands that have that have written nonsense. Mm-hmm. And like there are a lot of bands that I love where I go, where did they come up with these yeah. lyrics? Well, and I just the, the wrote key, that song. The key is that then you pull up that art school generator thing I sent you the link to a long time ago, and you use that to describe your song. Oh yeah, that's what I, that's what I'll do. Yeah, yeah. that's when, perfect. Or Actually, or you go with my favorite answer when someone asks someone what the lyrics are about or what a painting is about. My favorite is always, well, I'm going to let the viewer slash listener interpret things how they will. I don't want to force the narrative on anyone. That's the best one because that I literally think, is just standing there, just diarrheaing out of the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm thinking about, maybe what I'll do is my next song will be all of those responses. <laughs> Because what I've realized that is great. that when I want to make a statement, mm-hmm. my mind goes blank. Yeah. And, well, I heard Rick off. Ross mention on uh, was it on one of the broken records recently, or Rick Rubin. Did I say Rick Ross? <laughs> it was not Rick Ross. Rick Rubin on one of the broken records recently made a comment about protest songs, and he was like, "When you're, you know, when you try to write a protest song, it never lands." Like, it, you know, it's better when you write a song and it gets adapted kind of as a protest song a little more. So I think maybe yeah. that you're kind of falling into that territory where, like you said, you're trying trying to make a statement, but it's trying to force a, you know, a, a square peg in a round hole to some extent. Yeah, it's, it's fun to because it kind of ties into what happens at work, which is just about accept what, ha- you know, I, I'll never know from day to day what's going to happen. And any day things can can be completely different, and then it's a matter of well, what do you do with it? And what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do with this is tr- try more, because I I found a place where where there's some success for me. Yeah. And so I'll try another one, and I'll see, and maybe I'll have found a a, a breakthrough. You know, of 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 like the st- what's the stock market term? I, I hit resistance <laughs> and, and I've broken through the resistance level Yeah, and, and hopefully it'll just go up. And that's, it's a real easy thing to always hit resistance, always hit resistance, always re- hit resistance and give up. But I never gave mm-hmm. up. I've always, I may not go back at it really hard because yeah. I don't feel like, I don't feel like beating my head into a wall when it comes to art. I right. I'd rather have it just it just come. I think and the so accepted something... behavior yeah. with art is when you hit a wall a lot of times it ends up being like music. I've heard a bunch of musicians and different podcasts talk about how something's just not there so they just put it away for now. You know, yeah. and I'm and, like, yeah, and that's probably why you've got 10,000 files on your computer of things you put away. <laughs> that's it. Yes, <laughs> you know? that's it. And and I really think that a lot of that also applies to just kind of my general life. It's a great metaphor mm. in that that in my in my work life, the same thing kind of applies. I just I just need to put this away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, the thing about it is there's there's pride and <laughs> involved at work and there's all those other self-centered egos and the don't you know who i am and <laughs> <laughs> yep. yes of course right yep. and so that's the hardest thing to let go of art is kind of doesn't seem like it's that in, important so it's 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 easier but in a lot of ways it's it's very similar and it's just a matter of of well art and my work is pretty much the same in that success happens when i get henno out of the way <laughs> <laughs> right right Sure. Yeah. So that's been fun. And and then we've been I wasn't sure what I was doing with the extra refi money and 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 I'm about to buy the most expensive couch I've like I've never bought furniture before. I just get it. Yeah. You know, because when you work in places where people live, furniture just appears and oh, yeah. nice furniture appears, right? Mm-hmm. Someone's always remodeling and then they're like, Hey, does anybody want this? Yeah, sweet, or you know, or or you you buy something here used or that or whatever, but this is the first time it's like okay I want to buy something new and I have a very specific thing and it has to meet certain cri- criteria and it all it all came together and I was like wow and then I got to the bottom line of the price I was like 
holy shnikes. <laughs> but what feels so good is that is that Sharon and I are taking the money and and doing something with it for the house that feels good. There's no idea this is going to increase the value or remodeling this has nope, let's ma- let's enjoy this. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. this is where we're going to live. Right. And that's also a nice place to be is to is to just have that level of of in a way it's 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 simplicity. I mean, I know it's there's all the it it definitely pushes the retail therapy buttons in some ways. Yeah. But it's also um, growth for me, and this is my win for the week, is because of struggling with debt, it's almost like, and I, and I know I've talked about it here, it's almost easier to be in a state of, of disharmony, what's the, like stress. Mm-hmm. I'd, it's almost like I'm so used to being in financial stress I don't know how to handle it when I'm not. Right. And so therefore my reactions tend to be kind of strange because I've never been there before. Yeah. And so and and I've heard this with other people that I've been in uh groups with talking about debt and financial issues is that we get so used to living on the edge that we don't know what to do mm-hmm. when we're no longer there. I think that's why you take somebody who was brought up like with nothing, and then if they do acquire some wealth, a lot of times they'll either go too far the other way because they never had yes. the opportunity, or they stay like penny pinching as can be because they're terrified that they're going to go back. You know, that's like, it. You know, and, so, and I yeah. and I caught a little bit of that, mm. and and the it, the win for me was to was to do a little writing and and get back into the purpose. What was this for? What you know? What are we? You know? Yes, a lot of it was to get rid of our debt, but it was also to you know have some an opportunity to make some improvements in this and that, and to stay in there and to not lose lose focus on that and stay on the plan and so that was my win is that there was a part of me that really wanted to hoard all of a sudden yeah like who knows what's gonna happen i totally understand that because i i finally got my stimulus check this week and oh awesome and i've got a list of things that i've i've either needed or want and i don't mean like just like silly want stuff but it's like you know like i i need an external hard drive for my computer kind of thing you know so or i've wanted so you know, it's stuff like that, but I've done the exact same thing as I've already been out and seen a couple things where I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like I've got it. The point of having it is supposed to be to put it into the economy, um, yeah. you know, yeah. right? So and I know that, but it's still like I part of me wants to just like sit sit in a corner and just, you know, <laughs> just wrap myself <laughs> around it like mine, <laughs> you know, <laughs> But I'm a wealthy miser. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just stroking the check, you know, my precious. <laughs> you know, like So I, I totally get it. And and I've been that way different times when I've, you know, happened to come into a little bit of money, especially having been unemployed and stuff where I haven't had, you know, a regular paycheck or any regular amount of money is like I get it and now, and now it's like okay well now I got to write down everything and then go okay prioritize you know what I mean it's like I have to approach things in such a I don't have to but that's how my brain's going is you you have to do this cuz you know you're not going to get another one next week you know so when this is gone it's gone there's no replacement for it kind of a thing so I uh, yep I I hear you and, and what's great about it for the other thing that was good and the other win is everything was discussed openly yeah and that is also a good thing that was part of this pro like just because this is over you know there was a lot of communication going into this and i and there was all of a sudden like no there's no reason that this communication should end we should continue that totally because that's going to help you be successful yeah i was just going to say yeah so you stay stay on the path to success yeah stay on the plan and and that's been i that's definitely chalking it up as as a as a financial win for sure and yeah. and i want to and you know basically gave myself this month to take care of that kind of stuff so in about a week then it it's we go into the next phase 
uh, which is there no what we're the agreement is until the end of the year no use of credit cards debit cards only track all of the spending yeah so that by the end of the year we can see where the money goes right which is a great way to set your budget going into next year yeah yes or at least for whatever time frame you know even if yeah, it's well, only yeah, for three exactly. months or something you know like hey we'll yeah. revisit this every so often or something so yeah that's yeah. that's a good good attack <clears throat> Also, I'm glad you finally got that. Yeah, Check. me too. <laughs> I was like, "Jeez, <laughs> I never thought I was going to." Um, so yeah, I so yeah, obviously anyway, that was. I mean, that was a big thing for me this week because, like I've talked on here before, when I don't have any money, I'm I, I hate being that way, and I know everyone does. But I don't know how to describe it, but Jen can attest to this. I'm a different person when I'm completely broke. And it it, it stresses me so badly. And not in a, oh, I'm going to lose my house or I can't eat kind of thing. Because as I've said before, I'm blessed in the fact that I don't have to worry about those currently. You know, but I I still do. You know, my my brain won't give me reprieve. You know, like I I ha- my brain is like, ooh, is there some way to stress him over this? Here it is. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> it's got the biggest, you know, big TV magnifying glass out looking for stuff. And you know, just getting that and seeing when I pull up my bank account and seeing that number, it's just like, ah. <sighs> You know, like okay, I can have a breath for you know for for a little bit here, and 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 like I said, you know, I've already done some stuff that you know I've ordered, you know, like I mentioned before about buying new like socks and underwear and, and shorts, just stuff I've really needed, you know. So and it feels good to be able to do that, and then still look at my bank account and go, oh, it doesn't say like five dollars now, <laughs> you know, because in the past that's what it's been. When I finally do go buy something or. Here's a, a silly one, which is there's a, a bar soap that I like using. Um, I found that it, it's it uh, it helps calm my um, my skin uh, condition down, and I really like it. And it's oddly enough, it's made it's like a craft beer soap. And I saw on their Instagram yesterday that apparently because of you know financial hardship, they they got a shutter. And I was like, oh, man, you know, because first of all, I, you know, I hate to hear a business have to close, especially one I, you know, I, I like. And then I was like, oh, I got to get some more of their soap, you know, <laughs> like and and I was like, hey, I actually can do this right now. You know, I could go order six bars of it if I want to or eat or, you know, that'll last me for a while. Um, but I do also in the back of my head, my brain immediately goes, you know. Like, yeah, but do you really want to spend the money on that? <laughs> you know, like, mm. <laughs> it's just, and it's not a lot. It's just, that's how my brain has gotten, which don't get me wrong. On one hand, like I was saying earlier, it's like you go from, I, I can go from one extreme to the other to where if let's say the stimulus check was like $5,000, right? I'd probably be going stupid for part of that money. I'd be anything yeah. I want. I, mine, 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 you know. <laughs> And then I'd hit a certain point to where I'd be like, okay, time to pump the brakes and tighten up. And I would go so far the other way to where, you know, I'd be out and I'd be hungry. And, you know, my brother would be like, hey, let's get something to eat. And I'd be like, nah, 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 I'll just wait for two more hours till I get home, you know? <laughs> so um, so true. Yeah, that's why I said I, I fully know the, the pendulum swing on, on that kind of feeling. And unfortunately, I've, I've – I haven't been in a position in a long time to where I've felt like I, I could um, just stop it in the middle to where, hey, you know, sometimes it's fine to spend a couple bucks, you know, and, and be frivolous and whatever. You just can't do it all the time. You can't, you know, you can't, you don't want to have your foot all the way down on the gas or the brake, you know, like you, you want to have a nice blend of, of moving consistently here and. I've yet to find that. Hopefully someday I'll be able to find it. But in the meantime, because <laughs> you know, like I was in GameStop yesterday and, you know, there's a game that came out a few weeks ago that I really want. And I'm talking with the manager there and he's telling me about how great the game is and how he's been playing it and telling me all this stuff. And, you know, and he's like, he's like, you ought to grab it. And I'm like, 
you know, or, you know, or like, I really want a Nintendo switch, you know, and (laughs) stuff like that. It's like, do you need that? No. (laughs) Um, but there is something in video games. Now, don't get me wrong. I already have plenty of video game opportunity with the systems I have and games. Um, but I do use video games as one of my primary distractions from my depression and anxiety. So there is, a air quote medical use to them, <laughs> mm-hmm. but that still doesn't necessarily justify buying everything, you know? So, um, but yeah, it's been kind of weird because I, I've, like I said, you know, I'm looking, looking at my list and already rewritten it a couple of times, kind of reorganizing stuff and whatever. And, and who knows, you know, I still may not pay any attention to it, but, <laughs> but that's been my big thing this week is like I said, just, I, I feeling feeling some freedom from that stress that I carry 99% of the time, you know, even right now I'm still doing the, um, uh, my brain is already going to the, it's not going to last, you know, which on one hand is good because like I said, I do need that element of, Hey, don't go blow it all right away. Yeah. You know, cause you know, you don't get a regular paycheck, like try to make it last. But there's also the element of it that it's like, well, there are things on your list that you need. Don't not get those because of this feeling. You know, don't like I said, don't don't put the foot down on the brake completely. So uh, it's it's interesting how I get a freedom. But like I said, then my brain's like, ooh, I found a new way to stress him. You know, (laughs) that's kind of what I'm getting at is that that when when. When we haven't had balance in something in our lives, yeah, right. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it 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 it's almost like we pur- purposely sabotage ourselves yeah. when we get a taste of it. Right? Like, oh, can't can't have this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Mess it all up. Well, there's I'm, also like it's literally like I'm more comfortable there in the messed up yeah. spot because I've been there yep. longer. Well, and there's yeah. there's an element in my brain too because of you know my self esteem issues. Of the I don't deserve, mm-hmm. exactly fill in the blank. Yep. Like, and I can yep. see you doing the same thing. Like with the couch is a perfect example, right? Because I've seen my mom go through the same thing. My mom for years and years and years, we never had any new furniture. Growing up, my mom didn't get a new couch until after my dad died, and she was with the next guy. She was with Danny, and he wanted. And they went out and bought a new couch. That was the first brand new piece of furniture like that she'd owned in her life. And at this point, my mom was, what, 50-something? So not that far off of where you're at, Heno. You know? So it's like, right? You know, see what I'm saying? So it's like I, I, I can get it because the feelings watching how that affected her was awesome for me because it was like I'm seeing her have some financial freedom finally. Because she finally had the ability to make the decision, hey, I want to get a new couch, not I have to take what's available, you know. And when she got her first car, like new car, it was the same way, you know. And it was like just – it was like a teenager getting their first car, you know, kind of a thing. And it was – so like I said, I I, I get it and I see that. But there's that element of I think all of us kind of have the – yeah, but maybe I should, or, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like you, like, you know, you go for a couch. It's like, you look at that bottom line price. I could have just as easily seen you go, get spooked off of that because of that bottom line and go, you know, yep. we can go get this, <laughs> you yep. know, but once in a while you just, I, I, you need to do that. Cause you, you've got to be able to enjoy what you've worked for also. And I think And I don't just mean work as in your job, but like you've been working and trying to get yourself overall in a better financial place. And I think, and, and, you know, like you said, the couch makes life more enjoyable, you know, and it's a simple, even though it's expensive, it's a simple pleasure because when you come home from work, you get to sit down on your nice couch or lay down on your nice couch or whatever, you know, and then you're like, you know, and and it's something you can enjoy for a long time because, Generally, they last for a good amount of time, you know, unless you're like, you know, slamming weights through it or something. I don't imagine you're doing that, but hey, whatever you do in your own time's your business. So, you know, <laughs> uh... anyway, so 
that's basically been about my week. I haven't really done much else. Um, <laughs> really, I've been in my head a ton this week. Even though, like I said, my big win for the week also is that I found some freedom. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's it's like I look back and there's like, well, there's like 40, 40 ball and chains attached to my leg. Well, I took one off. <laughs> but it still helps. No matter what, it still helps. And actually, there's a couple of bills that I've owed for a little bit that are not much. You know, like 50, 100 bucks, that kind of thing. And those are going to be the first things I take care of. And those will make me feel better because I've owed those for a little bit and just not had the money to pay them. So, you know, I'll gain little freedoms also along the way from this. So, it, you know, in the long run, obviously, it'll it'll make me feel good. And they'll be thinking, of course, I'm going to buy something stupid along the way because I'm me. And <laughs> whatever. But anyway, so, yeah, that's I yeah, that's about all I can think of for this week. Oh, actually, I have one last thing, which was uh, I, I've noticed that I've been I, I, I've been, for lack of a better term, I've been crankier recently. And I haven't been this way in a while, because one thing I noticed, you know, I've talked on here before about how I had I've, I've worked really hard trying to get my anger under better control. And I've, I think in a lot of ways, the medicine I've gone on over the years has helped in that to where I've gone from like an anger issue to just a cranky issue, you know, to where most of the time I just get a little bit cranky and I might, and and I might spout a little something off, but I don't hold it as long, you know, which is where the anger would have been where I'd hold it for three days or something, you know? Uh, but I was in Lowe's and I was walking toward the cash out and this guy I see him pick his pace up, and I just keep walking. Like, I didn't pick my pace up. I just kept walking. And I got there about three steps before he did. Hmm. And I could tell he was visibly upset. I had literally – I went in there to get this stuff that's um, for ants because all of a sudden we have ants. So um, I went in there to to get that. I had two bottles of this. That is all I had, two little tiny bottles. That's all I had in my hand. And this guy had, like, five things. And, you know, he pulls the (sighs) move. And it's like, first of all, dude, you have more than me. Like, come on. If it was the opposite, even then, it's still only five things. I wouldn't, you know. But, like, the other line they had open, there was a dude with one of those, like, big contractor carts loaded with stuff. That dude was going to be going through that checkout for probably half an hour. You know? (laughs) Like, something (laughs) like that, yeah, I would have been like, hey, man, go ahead. You know, because I'm going to be here a while. So, anyway, he stood... I, I'm not even kidding. I, he was standing against me. I could feel his body heat. Ugh. And I turned around a little bit, and I'm like, hey, can you back off? And he was like, what's the big deal? And I'm like, you're standing way too close to me. And he's like, well, you'll be moving up in a minute. And I just looked at him, and I was just, and I'm not, this is something I rarely, rarely ever do. I'm bigger than the guy by quite a bit. And I just looked at him. I just looked at him and I said, I said, back up. And he looked at me and then took a step back. Nice. (laughs) And it's like, I never do that because first of all, I, I don't fight. I don't want to fight. I'm not going to get in a fight at a stupid lows over this, you know, like none of this garbage, but it's still the idea that I was like, that was one, like I was saying a few weeks ago. It's like, I was like, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going to stand for myself here because this is like, dude, you, first of all, you're in my personal space. Forgetting the virus stuff. It's like, you just get back a little bit. Like, give me some space. And mm-hmm. second of all, it's like, hey, we're all supposed to be doing our part here, trying to stay a few feet back, you know, six feet, whatever back. They have marks on the ground. All you have to do is stand on that one. I'm standing on one. All you have to do is go stand on the next one. You know, hit your mark. And... Hit your mark. Yeah, I, but like I said, when I just turned around and just looked at him, I was like, I said, back up, and he and I lowered my voice just a little bit, and he <laughs> took a step back. Nice. I was like, dude, hey, like, that is you know, sometimes you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah right. Well, that's yeah. the thing is, it literally, I am. That is not me. I don't want to ever do that. But it just irritated me so much, and I will say, man, that that cheesed me off for a while. After that, but I will say this: this is the funny part, <laughs> and I, I'm not advocating people do this. 
But boy, it was funny. I think I grew about four inches <laughs> walking out of there because you know Love my it. my chest was out, my head was up, and I'm like, "What? Who wants some?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was. Uh, but like I said, not not who I want to be necessarily in that moment. But also, I was like, you know what? I, maybe I kind of do because you know, don't don't be a jerk. Don't make other people be a jerk. You know, and that's what that did. And that's one of those scenarios, you know, Jen and I have talked about this over the years where like somebody will show up at your house and then not get the message. It's time to leave. Like when you you're trying to leave and they're just hanging around and you're like, hey, I'd like to go, you know, and you have to become the jerk at some point because they showed up unannounced. Right. You know, them being a jerk makes you be a jerk in that aspect. So, you know, to some extent, and it's like come on, don't, don't put us in this scenario. Or, you know, someone borrows something from you and you have to beg and plead to get it back from them. Then you get mad at them. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah. they're all, you know, butthurt over it. And you're like, look, you made me do this. Cause I, I want my item back. I loaned you. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that was my, you know, six feet, Harold. <laughs> 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 it was a younger dude too. So, I mean, I was running a risk. You never know. I mean, this dude might know some like, crazy mma stuff he could have just dropped me in a rear naked or something while i was standing there <laughs> you know <laughs> remember, remember that time when when on what was it a few weeks ago on salty language where your q of the w is if you could have something you know displayed on somebody's forehead oh man you know like information oh yeah yeah what would it be and mine would literally be intelligence level <laughs> fighting level <laughs> that's the a... first one is like yep not worth it the next one is like okay Maybe not worth it. Oh, can't fight. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, I can bluff all right here. Yeah. And I have yeah. size on but my side. Like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, how about you, Jen? How was your week? Um, it's been pretty normal. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, let's see. I am down sixteen pounds. Woo! So yep. So still moving in the right direction. Things are slowing down a bit, but that's to be expected, you know. Um, once you got the initial ur- um, surge of, of weight loss, then yeah. it usually goes down to be a pound or two a week. So mm-hmm. I can see that's probably going to be, you know, even it out. So Yeah, well, I, and that's pretty much what's recommended anyway is, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. You don't want rapid weight loss every week. That's generally not seen as good. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I added, um, I had pizza for the first time over the weekend. <gasps> Scandalous. And the date, I mean, or the <laughs> <Scandalous>. diet. <laughs> Scandalous. I haven't used that in a while. I used to say that a lot when people would say something like, Scandalous. <laughs> but um, I did it the right way. I had thin crust, no tomato sauce, add ranch, cheese, and bacon. Which I know sounds completely non-diet, but... That's not pizza. Hmm? I said that's not even pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it was pizza. I just didn't have tomato sauce. Right. All right. All right. Because of all the extra yeah, sugar. I know. Yeah, I know. And the, tomato, and the tomato sauce. Right. So, and then this Saturday, I add back alcohol. So, we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah, it should be interesting. Um, the gym still not going as well as I would All right. should I, be, but I, I, I got to ask the number again. How many times? Uh, one. Last week? Like, from last week till now, you've gone once? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's still once. I, as long as the number's not zero. If the number uh, hits zero, then it's, it's you know, you're in the red red zone territory. It's like, hey, the, you know. Danger, danger. <laughs> I know. I, I need to, and I know that would increase my um, my uh, my speed of losing weight um, by exercising, as well as my health, of course, yeah. would be increased by that. You start doing wind sprints out in your backyard. You know, I, I that, have the urge for it. That, I can do it. That's anything, a terrible but... idea because I know your balance. You're, <laughs> you're going to roll your ankle at least 17 times. 
Like, I have a really bad ankle, folks, so yeah. that would not be... That would be, be a incorrect. terrible idea, yeah. <laughs> okay, come on. Work out, schmark out. What's, what's the first drink going to be? Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm being an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I'll ask. Uh, I no. need to hit that booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next week, Heno's like, tell me all about it. it I what have... was it? Talk slow. It's... Yeah. Let's go with a shot. Yeah. It's going to be... Uh, I just picked up a new bottle of bourbon. Mm. Excellent. Yes, so it's going to be two ounces of um, wood of Knob Creek mm-hmm. smoked maple. Ooh, all right, excellent choice. Yes, so that should be interesting. Knob Creek smoked maple is going to be my first uh, my first drink that I have. Um, we'll see. Uh, depending upon the calorie count for the day, maybe I will have two drinks. <laughs> Right. I am not going to be prioritizing alcohol over food as right. much as is, you know, tempting to do so. Mm-hmm. You know, can't do that. I got to make sure I'm getting enough of my good calories. Right. Um. Yeah, so we got that going. And let's see, what else do I have going on? Well, you guys aren't going to be happy with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> I it anyways. Um, I've gone off my medicine again. Oh boy! You know, I know you're not not happy about the whole idea, right? Hmm. Yeah, I wonder why. Maybe because it's not a good idea. But <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I know all the dangers. I know all the risks. I'm just at the point now that I'm ready, I'm in a fairly controlled environment and I'm really want to see what I can handle it without. Yeah. Without meds. Did you wean yourself off at least? No, I went cold Turkey. All right. Well, I'm going to get an Uber to your house real quick. <laughs> wow. I know. I am the poster child for what not to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this week. Disclaimer time. Again. You know, disclaimer yeah. time. Uh, most of us at the Crazy Life Podcast do not advocate <laughs> going off your medicine. Well, I should say one of us doesn't advocate because the other two have done it, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, no. Yeah, definitely. If uh, For anyone listening, if you're going to go off your medicine, please you know, work with your doctor and wean off of it appropriately because the side effects can stink. Like they, they really can. can suck. Yeah. Um, thankfully the only real side effects I've had is I've had lightheadedness and, uh, dizzy spells, but not bad ones. Like not yeah. okay. just moments that I had to sit down and, you know, kind of re- get, gather myself together type of thing. Right. So, no, it's nothing too horrible. Um, the biggest thing right now I'm actually fighting with is um, is making sure that I'm eating enough calories so that the dizziness isn't coming from that. Yes. You know, so just I'm working on balance this week. So this is a week of balance and working on keep, getting myself balanced out and stuff. Um, I did tell all of my my support system i'm telling you guys you know i told my husband of course i told one of my you know my close friends different things to look out for different things to keep their eyes on Mm -hmm. um just to make sure everything goes fine and that i don't get myself into a problem spot Mm -hmm. um so so far so good Mm -hmm. Have you, have you prepped your speech for when you go talk to your doctor again and tell her? Because <laughs> you know she's going to be looking at you with judgment face. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get judgment, but, yeah, you know, no, one she'll... of the side effects of the, of the Billify that I was on is it makes you gain weight and it makes it difficult to lose weight. Yeah, a lot of the different ones, different antidepressants and whatnot are that way. That's one benefit of the one that I'm on is it hasn't clinically shown that it leads to weight gain. So, although what's funny is they don't make any comment about like whether or not it makes it harder to lose weight, but they just mention it doesn't make you gain weight. (laughs) 
so this um so that that played a, a role in my decision making as yeah. well as you know i just feel it's time time to to try it yeah okay um and see see what happens so um that's going on and this weekend my mom is coming into town and she's staying with me and so is my brother so you know doing the the usual I'm good enough. They love me regardless of how my house looks. I just have to do the best I can to have the best place that I can put together for them and that they will be happy and comfortable. So that's gross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Breaking out my mantra, not freaking out, going back to the, you know, just really. And definitely more adult than my, if they don't like it, there's a hotel down the road mentality. Right. (laughs) Which I could never do. No, I know you couldn't. (laughs) I absolutely could. (laughs) Like, hey, if I'm nice enough to open my house to you and you don't like it, I mean, hit the bricks. (laughs) And then, oh, something else I did. So there was um, a couple people on Twitter that put together a, a Zoom open to just whoever wanted to jump on type of a situation. So basically, I jumped on a Zoom call with all strangers. I've never really talked to them on on the timelines or anything. So about six strangers. I just jumped on, no alcohol, no medicine in my system, and managed a whole evening, about three and a half hours worth of talking with people and just socializing and I made it through with very little issue. Good. So I was very proud of myself. I'm like, oh, all right. I can manage through this stuff. <laughs> and the next day I had a minor social hangover. But it was just a minor one. It wasn't too bad. And I didn't tear myself apart, which was really awesome. I didn't Good. go back through and, you know, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that type of stuff. Mm. I didn't have any of that, and I was able to kind of just manage through the next day just fine. So, all good things. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Good. I guess so that's been my week. Right. And, Brian, you have our topic tonight, correct? Yep. And this is, um, you know, a word that's kind of come up over – or what was it? I don't remember when it was like created or whatever, but within the last few years or so, um, more so relevant now than any probably, but we're going to talk about doom scrolling and doom scrolling is basically when you're, um, you know, like a lot of us will like late at night, we will just scroll Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever social media kind of thing or news sites or something to that effect and we will just keep reading whatever is going on and we'll just keep going and going and going and um the first time i remember ever doing this was when we were in florida jen because you remember we got there the day of the boston marathon bombing oh yes so that night the police were on the hunt for the two guys the one guy and his brother and I was watching new. The news was not breaking on TV that night. It was breaking on Twitter. Like everything was hitting Twitter well before it was on TV, uh, because you know, on TV they they were trying to like check sources and whatnot. On Twitter, people are just like, "Hey, I heard this," you know. <laughs> so it, it just it breaks faster. And I just remember Jen falling asleep and I'm just sitting there on my phone, just scrolling, reading every little development that was going on for hours on end. And, and just afterwards, I was so anxious and just so tense from it. And I know people are doing that now because of the, you know, pretty much everything going on this year, the race stuff, the politics, the coronavirus, the whatever else it happens to be, you know, there's so much that's been heavy this year and people are uh, really sticking, you know, or not really sticking to it, but they're really falling into these pits and these, these holes. So this talks about, this is the one I have like four different things I'll have in the show notes. If anyone wants to read them, Uh, this one was from NPR 
and it basically talks about how or this one line in here it says our minds are wired to look out for threats the more time we spend scrolling the more we find those dangers the more we get sucked into them the more anxious we get and that's what i found that night uh and i've done it since too you know i've i've found it different times that i i fall into these things and you know they they said that a gr- the grim content can throw a dark filter on how you see the world now you look around yourself and everything feels gloomy Everything makes you anxious, so you go back to look for more information, and the cycle continues. You know, so you know because we look, we it, it's interesting because there's sometimes where, like for a long time, I use social media to escape bad thoughts in my head. So I would go on Twitter and scroll looking for jokes or good stories or whatever, and you know recently social media has not felt as you know as much like there's a lot of that versus there's so much you know again people posting about those topics i mentioned earlier so you it, everything feels heavy so if you're scrolling trying to find a joke or whatever it's so much harder and it feels like you're looking for a needle in a haystack you know and you you probably don't even realize that by just scrolling and reading stuff along the way what you're doing and and it does if you're a person with anxiety depression any of those kind of things even if you're not these things can really weigh heavy on you and like i said it can really change kind of how you see things and what you're looking for because you 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 can get fomo from this and not in a oh man i wish i was there as as much as a oh man i don't want to miss part of the story you know Mm -hmm. something crazy is going on right now i want to make sure i don't miss anything which is its own danger, you know, because, again, that keeps you picking your phone up every two seconds looking. Oh, is there a new story? Is there, a, you know, a new this on Twitter? Is there whatever? So they mention in here um, some advice on how to, uh, well, it says to temper the doom, but <laughs> hmm. to help break your cycle of doing this. Um, and the first one is set a timer. Uh, the it's a guy from uh, oh shoot, where's his name? I missed it. Is it Aldo Amelia or woman? I'm sorry, Amelia Aldo or Aldeo. I don't know how to say her name. Anyway, she's the director of this Together CBT, a clinic that specializes in cognitive behavioral therapy. Has worked with her patients to cut back on it. This is her advice. Uh, so set the timer. She says I work mostly with clients who experience anxiety. And part of what I've been doing with them now for weeks, for months, is actually setting limits to how much they're scrolling. And I literally tell them, set up a timer. If you do want to know, yeah, if you do want to know what's happening in the world, so the solution isn't to never go online again. uh, Geez, I read this completely wrong. Let me redo that whole line. You do want to know what's happening in the world. So the solution isn't to never go online again, but it's finding boundaries. Which makes sense because, you know, like I was doing on the day of that bombing, I was seriously just constantly refreshing social media or whatever on my phone looking for any little detail that would pop up. And it's like you could just wait 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, pop back online and see what developments there were. You don't need to have the play-by-play, you know, on something like that. Uh, It's different if you're in an immediate danger or something. Like right now as we're talking, you know, there's – potentially a giant hurricane about to hit, you know, Texas and Louisiana that I can totally understand you pulling your phone or refreshing your phone. Like, you know, it, are there certain things? Do I need to this? What, you know, staying on top of things for your own safety. Um, or if you were in an area where there was rioting or that kind of thing, again, I understand for safety purposes or in Boston that night of that, that bombing, people didn't know where those guys were. They didn't know how many were involved. They didn't, you know, um, mm-hmm. But for the most part, you know, a lot of this stuff, we really can set timers and walk away. Also, forgetting the doom scrolling part, it's a good thing anyway, because it'll fo- it'll force you to actually re-engage in your real life versus, you know, online life. Um, Helps with perspective. Yeah, that too. I, I oh Man, I can't remember who it was. There was a podcast I was listening to the other day, and the woman on there was talking about, uh, she's a, a 
I can't remember if she's a psychiatrist or psychologist, but she was talking about how um, they found in, you know, study, this study that they did that people were happier when they were making, or maybe, no, it was, oh, it was on uh, Psych Central, their podcast. They were talking about how they did a, a, th- a study with people and found that their relationships were stronger with people that they actually interact with in real life than their friends online. And, you know, the guy that was on the podcast was basically like, you know, make sure you're still working on these things. You know, he's like, even sending a text versus a phone call, he's like, make the phone call kind of a thing because he's like, text is an instant gratification thing. Boom, boom. It's done. If you ask somebody how they're doing on a text, most of the time they're going to say fine or I'm okay. On the phone, he's like, they might be more willing to open up because who wants to sit and type like a million words of how you're really feeling versus you could just say them easier and stuff. So anyway, there's a variety of reasons why setting a timer for social media is maybe not the worst idea. Uh, I've heard uh, Adam Conover, I think it was, who's on Adam, Ru- or he had the show Adam Ruins Everything. I think he talked about how he basically, like his phone, he has some app that basically locks him out of his social media after so much time to where you can't get back in iphones have that built in oh okay that set um limits to what you do okay so that's probably what he's using then so you know there are tools out there to help you if you're a person who doesn't feel like you can just do it yourself (laughs) because i understand it's it's tough to just leave your phone sit sometimes so it's amazing to me. My one brother, a few weeks ago, my mom was trying to get a hold of him, and uh, he was like, yeah, I didn't – he's like, I just didn't, you know, pick up my phone and whatever. And it's so weird when you hear people say that because, you know, you think about it, It's like nobody goes anywhere without their phone. Our phones are literally part of our hands now, you know? <laughs> and, and then it's like, well, he's older than me too. So it's – he's still from that generation that grew up – I mean, like we did – but that grew up without those kind of things, you mm-hmm. know, like he didn't embrace computers until he was an, an adult, you know, whereas like we were exposed to him when we were kids or teenager, you know, that's when those things first were really getting into schools and whatnot. So, you know, that generation doesn't immediately go to technology always. And like, it's, but it's still weird to hear somebody go, yeah, I, you know, I only looked at my phone like once yesterday. It's like, were you sleeping <laughs> or flying or something like what was going on? Anyways, the next point on here <clears throat> is stay cognizant going into it, opening up your phone, reminding yourself why you're there, what you're looking for, what information are you trying to find? And then periodically checking in with yourself. Have I found what I needed? And that's actually, I think a really good tip. Because it is easy to, once you get into that scrolling cycle, that you you lose sense of, you know, I think everybody's probably done it, right? Where you get on social media at some point, and then you lose an hour mm. or something. And you're like, whoa, I was on, you know, like, oh, man, I didn't even realize it was that late or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, check to see. Are you looking for whatever it is you're looking for? Have you found it? If so, you know, maybe back away from the phone for a little bit. Because there's, we always love those little pop-ups and different, you know, if you like this article, read this article. Oh, yeah. And yep. soon, uh-huh. one thing leads to another, and you are wasting a couple hours just, and your initial idea was to check the weather. Right. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're hearing about, you know, you're reading all these great stories yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so. you go online to check the weather or whatever, and then you're like, did you know skunks migrate? You know, <laughs> like <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I I hear you. I'm so guilty of that. That's actually one of the reasons I never really embraced uh, YouTube. I don't use YouTube very often, and the reason for it is I know if I get on every time I get on there and I start looking at something, there'll be something else, you know, and something else and something else, and yeah, you know, that they're good at what they do. And their goal is mm-hmm. to keep you on your phone as long as they can. Um, the last tip they give is swap vicious cycles for virtuous cycles. Whether it's mm. ice cream, connecting with friends, sending something funny to a friend, those are the things we should spend more time doing 
just to build positive emotions in our lives. Which again, it makes sense, right? Like I had said before, instead of just mindlessly scrolling, you know, try to focus on things that are part of your actual life. You know, Mm -hmm. talking with a friend or interacting with a friend in some way rather than, you know, spending six hours scrolling fill in the blank social media. And the worst part too is it's not like there's just one social media. There's a lot of times where and I'm guilty as anybody of it, I'll be on Twitter and then I'll jump over to Instagram and then I'll jump back to Twitter and you know, the next thing you know, I'm like, what am I doing? Like I'm just mindlessly doing this now. And 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 it's it's literally a FOMO situation at that point because like I said, whether it's doom scrolling or it's just general social media use and I'm like I'm just not even looking for anything. I'm just, I'm just refreshing because I can, you know, mm-hmm. type of a thing. So, yeah, definitely, uh, if you can find something that's a little more uh, positive slash, you know, in real life type of a thing, uh, you know, try try to focus on those things more in general. You know, we've talked on here before, we've done episodes before about other social media stuff. And it isn't that we're trying to like full on demonize social media, but it's still a tool. And much like any tool you're handed, you should always know what the dangers of that tool are. You know, I I wouldn't just hand somebody a circular saw who has no clue how to operate it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Why not? Like you, you know, do this and this, because otherwise you're probably going to lose a hand or it's going to jump into your leg or... (laughs) It's so important with these things is to keep perspective and, you know, like it talks about in the article, um, making sure that you have a purpose, have a point that you're going after. Keep that point. Ask yourself, keep that in front of your mind. Like, why am I doing this? What purpose is it serving me? You know, is this something that I have to be doing? And it's, it's just... It'll make your life so much simpler as far as thinking things through and everything becomes so much more simple if you just take the time to really be thoughtful with your actions and and what you're doing and being careful. Yeah, not to mention, like, you know, combining these can be very good too, because like I said before, you take my, my one example to where it's like, Oh, I'm going to go on Twitter and look for jokes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if I do that without any sort of a time constraint, like I said, it's not as easy to find the jokes as it used to be, at least not on my timeline. And, uh, so I could seriously be on there scrolling forever. And it's like, how, at some point, am I doing myself a service? by just scrolling for jokes or would it be better for me to maybe find something else like a funny TV show or a YouTube video or something more along those lines where it's like, instead of really having to dig for a funny, it's like, Hey, it's right here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right in your face. You just go consume it. You don't have to deal with negative stuff along the way. You can just go consume uh, what you're looking for. And also, you know, it's, we we talk on here quite a bit right about like when's the time to seek help or make changes and it's when something is negatively affecting your life right so if you're mm-hmm. constantly on social media and you find that it's like I, I, like i'm just depressed all the time because of this or i'm I, i'm down or it's it's making me anxious you know red flag like that that's time it's time to make a change to, like I said, find a different way to find a distraction if that's what you're doing. Or if you're trying to find the news, instead of using social media, find a news outlet. You know, hopefully a reputable news outlet. And <laughs> but yeah, what's the other piece of it is making sure that you are getting your information from reputable sources. Because otherwise, you can which, go into the gossip mill and <laughs> get lost. Yeah, I actually just saw a headline a little bit before we jumped on here tonight that said that there was a poll done that people trust um i don't know it was a an email that i got that said that people trust podcasts more than traditional media for news that's dangerous Mm. because listen 
we've said it countless times on this show. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals, but we still can give opinion. And that's why we also urge if something seems like it might help you, please go seek out the appropriate people to help you with these things. Um, because there are plenty of podcasts out there that don't care about that. <laughs> you know, that they're just going to tell you what they think. And if you just buy in immediately, you you know, it could be misinformed, or dangerous, however you want to look at it. So, uh, yeah, please try to find reputable sources for, for stuff that you read and consume, as, you know, for your news and those kind of things. It's bad information to be almost as dangerous as no information. Oh, seriously. In fact, it can be more dangerous. <laughs> yeah, information's a powerful weapon, you know. This is true. Think of the people who who hold a lot of power in the world have been the ones who, who know how to filter and wield information over the last, you know, what, 15 years? As the internet mm -hmm. has shifted to being more about data mining than anything. <laughs> it's true. You know? Absolutely. So, yeah, just uh, please be careful, you know, and again, you know, most of us enjoy social media, but just especially right now where everything for a lot of people seems really heavy. I don't know how many times in Twitter groups people are like, man, there's just so much this and this on Twitter. And it's like, yeah, that's because that's how the country's feeling right now. <laughs> you know, we're, we're we're not feeling real optimistic and hopeful at the moment. Things are scary. They're uncertain. They're weird. They're, you know the the you know incredibly under overused unprecedented you know <laughs> so um just please try to take care of yourself while you're doing this too and try try not to let something that you found enjoyment in well you know as we've talked on here before strength can become a weakness social media is a good uh proving point of that you know, for all the strengths that it does have. And it still does. I, I see plenty of great stories every day from a few accounts that I follow where, you know, they post great feel good type stories and all that kind of stuff. But then right around, you know, sandwiching it will be some really just awful stuff. So also one last thing, don't, don't be afraid of unfollowing and, and stuff. You know, if people, somebody gets too heavy for you or, or whatever right now, stop following them. Yeah. You know? It, yep. it's, it's funny how hard it is to do that, but then when you finally do it, you're like, oh, wow, that was actually really easy. Yeah. I've been Why doing do it. Why do I keep paying attention to this when I can just pretend I never saw it and just <laughs> don't look back? Right? Yeah. It is. Letting go, right? Letting yeah. go feels let go or be dragged yep and right now it's be... it's easy to be dragged right now yeah, it's really it's easy. very easy yep. so well that's the that's yeah. where it comes back to that thing it's like okay do you really want to mud wrestle with a pig because <laughs> that's Kinda. your choice yeah like, you know you know the pig's in the mud yep and you're like yeah i'm mud wrestling a pig here we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> right or if you're in another place, yeet. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. So there you go. I think, like I said, I'll have, um, I have a few other uh, articles on doom scrolling and whatnot, if anyone wants to read them. Because each one had kind of a different approach to it. So they're not all bad, you know, and most of them are fairly short. So they're, they're pretty decent reads to really jump up in there because I think a lot of us do this absent-mindedly. Like we just don't even realize yeah. we're doing it. And, Absolutely, yeah. and we learn like in therapy, one of the main things I've learned is very much, um, I would say we've, you know, Heno's probably learned it through recovery too, is, is the, um, is the more mindful we are, are of our actions. We, we literally can realize like there's so many times in life we don't even realize we've come to a fork in the road and just gone one way without thinking. And when you're mm -hmm. mindful of stuff, you actually can go, whoa, pump the brakes and then make a decision which way you want to go at that fork. And like I said, with this, I've been unfollowing tons of accounts because they're just not what I want in my life right now. Maybe I'll go back and follow them down the road if things change or whatever. But right now, that's it's just not what I want to consume. 
you know, and mm-hmm. I'm, and like I said, it makes scrolling social media so much better. <laughs> I can imagine. So, you know, like I said, never forget that you curate. I mean, I know there's algorithms, but you still curate your timeline. So if there's yeah. something you don't like, stop looking at it, like unfollow it. You know, I'm not saying you have to block people, but just unfollow stuff and just be done with it or mute accounts that turn off retweets. Like I've done that with some where I like what the person posts themselves, but I can't stand their retweets. So I will, you know, turn off their retweets. You know, there's a, there's a lot of tools and, and stuff to give you a lot of control in this. So never, you know, try to not lose sight of what's going on. Um, and, you know, if you have to walk away from it, take a break, uninstall it from your phone for a week or a couple days or two hours, whatever you need to do, you know, and, um, you know, just, just try to do it. And also if you're feeling certain ways about this, don't forget if you are in therapy, talk to your therapist about this as well. Or if you're in a group type of situation of any kind, talk about it in there. Cause again, you're not alone. There's everybody's going through the same stuff. And right now, a lot of us keep combing our phones because literally so many of us are going, what next? Mm, yeah. It's a, yeah. it's such a what's next and kind of year. I'll tell you, that's a good, for me, that's a good indicator is when that I've been engaging too intensely mm-hmm. is if I find myself searching for that what's next. Exactly. Yep. And it's a great indicator. That's where I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is not where I want to be. Yeah. Time mm-hmm. to put it down. Yep. Or yeah. play a game or something else. <laughs> yeah. Right. Take your dog for a walk. Take your dog for a walk. Yeah. Have some ice cream. Right. And leave the phone at home. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> I did it recently. Good. It was weird. You know? Yeah, I was yeah. like, you know what? I don't need this. I'm gonna I'm going to walk my dogs and I'm going to actually pay attention to what I'm doing. Nice. What was this, 1980? <laughs> Which, one last thing before we, we I close up the show. Have you seen the commercial with the dog that has everybody is bored, so they keep walking the dog? Yeah. And the dog doesn't want to do it anymore. He's just kind of like, no, I don't want to go out anymore. Right, because so many people with the quarantine, they were taken to going outside a lot more, taking the dog on the walk. Poor dog. You know, it's like, I, I've been walked enough today. <laughs> Like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It just brought all that to mind. No, no, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's one of those so, few quarantine or, you know, it's it's one of the few commercials that I think were done really well and captured a really good moment of reality right now. You know, like yeah. the icebreakers one where it shows the person talking about mask breath. And I'm like, oh, that was smart. <laughs> you know, because anybody who's wearing right. a mask knows what mask breath is. Even if you think your breath smells great, we're all finding out our breath's not as great as we think through the day. <laughs> so, you know, carry a tin of mints to pop one in once in a while. You know, that was brilliant marketing. So yep. there's been a few of them that have really nailed it. And, you know, most of them are still the. You know, we care about you, but please don't forget to come spend your money with us. And it's like, yeah, read the room. (laughs) Read the room. (laughs) Like, people are high levels of unemployment, but don't forget to remind us to come consume, you know? (laughs) Like, (sighs) anyway. Well, folks, it's about that time. So if you'd like to continue the conversation, and you know you do, because we've talked about some pretty awesome stuff tonight, um, we'd love to hear from you. So reach out to us. You can reach us at thecrazylifepodcast.weebly.com is our website. Thecrazylifepodcast at outlook.com is our email address. Uh, If you would like to reach me direct, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Um, You can message me, all that good stuff. Um, you can reach me at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. And if you want to hear more from me, you can also hear me on my other podcast, which is Shake the Sheets Pop Culture Talk Podcast that I do with Mr. Nate. So you can find that at shakethesheets.com is our website. And Heno, how can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. I'm on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Hanno Heiter, it's H-E-I-T-U-R. You can check out my other podcast, the Moving the Needle podcast, where this week we released our 
our review of the movie Limbo with our good friend Steve, who does a bunch of Disney podcasts. And I forgot about it until I was editing it that he does. I think it must be really fun. He does a so he does one. He does the Disney. He's big into I, th- I think it's Disney and Star Wars. I think it is. Yeah. And so one of them is more adult, but then the Disney one he does with his kids. Oh, OK. And I think, just think it's so fun. And they're watching every show on the disney channel and then talking about them okay interesting yeah and it was it was a, it, it's really neat uh steve's a steve's a neat guy so check him out and check out his podcast we have we have him on there if you're into uh, uh disney and um other pop he's he's a big movie buff along with roy and sean my our co-host so and then uh uh this week we're going to be doing the uh it was steven spielberg's third movie he done jurassic and he done jaws no jaws and et and he does 1941 which is like a kind of a slapstick comedy is that the one with dan Aykroyd and oh yeah belushi belushi and... yeah okay okay i remember yeah. that movie. huge cast of characters yeah, yeah so right. that one we're gonna be we're gonna be podcasting on this week that'll come out in a couple of weeks that was kind of fun too cool. so nice Thank you. Excellent. How about you, Brian? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tsunami. You can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language or at SaltyLanguage dot com. That show is not safe for work, and it's uh, me and my best friend just basically talking about whatever comes into our heads from life. We get silly and make up stuff about like you know a werewolf high school this week, and that was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> um. And then we talk, you know, pop culture stuff and whatever also, or weird news. Just like I said, kind of whatever, kind of whatever we notice from the week that just makes us laugh or angry or whatever. You know, we, we, I will say we, you know, we do try to stay away from like, you know, hot button stuff. We just try to have some fun with, with the world. So, yeah. But again, not safe for work. Very not safe for work. No. <laughs> uh, you can find this show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Pod. Uh, I post when new episodes go up over there, but you should already know about that because you've already re- or, uh, subscribed to the show. I hope by now, whether it's mm-hmm. on a variety of sources, you know, so you can find us on all sorts of platforms. Um, and if you haven't already, please rate and review uh, the show. If you haven't, that we would greatly appreciate that. Um, what am I missing here? Oh, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go check out the other shows on that network. And, yeah, I think that's it for the links. But, as always, you know, if you need help, please reach out. Uh, You know, even though we don't always talk about, like, mental health, mental health on this show, you know, everything pretty much kind of comes back to that. But, um, you know, if you do need help with that kind of situation, please reach out to somebody. Or, you know, even with, like, doom scrolling and stuff like that, you know, there's, there's... people out there that can help you kind of break habits from social media and whatnot. Cause, and, and, or if not, there's tons of topic or, uh, you know, like, uh, articles and whatnot that give good advice on how to break, uh, some of these cycles. So please use the incredible resources you have at your, like at your fingertips, literally, um, <laughs> you know, or, um, uh, reach out to somebody if you would, you know, and try to get some help. And please check in on your friends. You know, like we've said through this whole thing, you know, things are weird. They're heavy. All this kind of stuff. Just make sure your friends and family and everybody just kind of doing okay. Make sure, you know, see if they need anything. And, uh, of course, you know, the last thing is to try to be as kind as you can to one another. Um, We all are dealing with this. It's None of us really know what the heck we're doing right now. So we're just, you know, all meandering around. So just try to be nice to people. Show some kindness when you can. And like Heno said earlier on the thing, you know, it, you'll feel better about yourself when you do. Be, and it'll help you get out of your own head and sometimes just get out of your own way. Um, you know, oh, I, I was, I went and got my mom's prescription the other day and I'm leaving the pharmacy and there was a woman in front of me and, uh, she, I could tell she was going to hold the door, but then she kind of hesitated, you know? And it was funny cause the door, she kind of pushed it open. She used her elbow and just kind of pushed it open. When it came back, it clipped her right on the side of the butt. And I mean, 
she has she had an ample bottom, so <laughs> and she and I I you know she kind of laughed and I'm like you know I was like well you know thank you I said thank you because you know she was trying to hold the door for me yeah. and uh, and she's like well it's, you know it's a good thing the good Lord blessed me with a a big butt you know and <laughs> and we just kind of <laughs> laughed and whatever you know so. Yeah, we got a laugh out of it. You know, she was trying to be nice. Hopefully, she didn't get like a giant bruise out of it. It hit her pretty good. I mean, it it came back pretty fast. But uh, you know, there you go. Like I said, just try to be kind to one another and, and see if we can spread some of the stuff and maybe get some unity going back with things since we're all going through this a lot of the same stuff. Exactly. With that, everybody, go out there and have the best week you possibly can, and remember. Spread the love, not the COVID, and wiggle those toes.